I am someone who thought that I loved stream of consciousness books, but then John Vasa was basically like, hold my beer and watch this. Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So I initially thought that the most intimidating book on the long list was going to be The Books of Jacob or Tomb of Sand, just because they're gigantic. But no, it was actually this little guy, A New Name by John Fossa, which is the last in a trilogy or the second and seventh in a septology of books that he wrote. So we have The Other Name, I is Another, and a new name. This is of course the actual book that is on the International Booker shortlist. And while each of these books are relatively short, they are really tough to get through purely because of Fossa's writing style. Oh, I should also say the translator for this is Damien Searles. So let me tell you what this book, this series, I guess, is about, because I'm largely going to be talking about the series as a whole. They have all kind of blended together in my mind, which I think is the point, but I don't know. So this book follows Esla and also his doppelganger, Asla. Also, super apologies for that pronunciation. Um, I I can't. I just Norwegian. Like, come on. I feel like the like Scandinavian names in general are always giving like the hardest time. I'm going to be referring to him as the narrator or the main character, and then also the doppelganger. So that's the second one. And that way you don't have to listen to my terrible pronunciation, and you don't also go on pronouncing it that way because there's no way that's right. But yes. So we have these two people with the same name who are, are very much the same people, and the doppelganger is basically supposed to represent this different or alternative life that the main character could have had. They are both painters, they both went to the same art school, but the doppelganger seems to have landed himself in a much worse position than the main character, although they are both alone at the beginning of this book series after having been with people throughout their life, but they, they are now alone. One is still painting, the main character he's still painting and doing pretty well for himself there, and the other is an alcoholic and not a functioning one. So the writing style. Fossa writes in what is known as this slow prose and it is the most stream of consciousness, stream of consciousness I have ever experienced. A passage north could never. To give you an idea of what it's like, just imagine, you know, in your daily life when you're like, okay, I have to do something. So let's say you have to go to the post office before they close. And then you think, oh, well, what time does the post office close? clothes. Uh, do I have enough time to shower beforehand? Oh, no one really cares. I'll just grab a hat. Where is that hat? Man, I really need to clean out my wardrobe. And actually, this is a shirt that I haven't even worn before. I could definitely just grab this and get rid of it. Now, wait, no, I definitely need to be going to the post office before it closes. I might as well stop by the grocery store while I'm out because it's near the post office anyways. But what groceries do I even need to get? And actually, I'm feeling really hungry right now. Maybe I should just grab something to eat real quick. Wait, no, I definitely need to get to the post office before it closes. So that right there is basically the entire series summed up. Of course, it's not always as mundane, although sometimes it definitely is. Sometimes it is flashbacks to things that happened earlier in the main character's life or in the doppelganger's life. Sometimes it's just these like flashes of what's going on in his life. He has this like ability to like just jump into his brain and what's going on there. And it seems like he actually does know what's going on. It's not just him imagining what his life might be like in that given moment. And throughout the entire story, there's this painting of an ex, which if I had these same published versions all from Transit Books, then they line up to make a little X across the fronts of the books. But of course, Booker sent me this last one, so I'm not gonna complain about it. Also, it was my first Fitzcarraldo edition. I mean, including the other Fitzcarraldo that's in the book or long list. But there's this cross, this X that is shown throughout the books that oftentimes is what is starting each of the books in like the septology itself. So each of the seven. And I think it's supposed to be like showing the main character and the doppelganger and like their lives. Like they start in separate places. It meets at a certain point where 
they are going to art school together so their lives are very much intertwined at that point and then it separates again but I don't actually know and I could be super wrong about that. I have about zero confidence that I fully understood what these books were about and the messages that they were trying to convey so feel free to let me know what I am missing out on uh, in the comments. You, you are more than welcome to do that because uh, I don't know I just I don't feel like I got it. I would say that the main theme I guess throughout the books is this feeling of loss where the narrator is constantly reminded and brought back to times of his wife who has passed away and it seems like it's hard for him to get through anything without jumping back into a memory with her in it or with the doppelganger in it. So almost like he's unable to be in the present moment and I think that that's because of the loss that he has experienced again not totally sure. So do the Booker Frog and I recommend this book? Um no. I think maybe I would recommend the first book in the series as in the other name but I really don't think that you can read a new name without reading the other two. I can't imagine what that experience would be like but the first one also feels like the most meandering out of them like it's a real trial by fire as far as like are you gonna like this writing style and I really just think that in general these books are only going to appeal to a specific set of people and it's weird because I thought that I would be included in that set of people just because I like slow books I like meandering I like stream of consciousness but I just did not realize how slow slow could get. So it turns out you, you can't have too much of that for me when reading and I found I found my limit and it's here. Sorry Fossa fans. Anyways on a lighter note I will be doing my first live stream on my channel with Kieran from Katie Books for the announcement of the International Booker Prize. Let me know what you thought of a new name if you decided to read it especially if you only read a new name I'm really curious to know how that reading experience experience was and um, if you are like a FASA person and you just you totally know and you get it and you understand if you could please let me know what I missed when reading this I would love to hear it uh, because I don't know my brain's still reeling I literally finished this today <laughs> and my brain is just like mush right now so anyways that's gonna do it for this video so hope to see you at the live stream bye